Hello, welcome to BSCPR Theory at Vedial Bhagpare. Uh, in today's video, we are going to see the BSCPR theory and some simple trick to identify the geometry or the shape and the hybridization of the molecule. So, a little bit of introduction to the theories of chemical bond. So, the one of the foremost theories of chemical bond is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Um, this is one of the simplest theory uh, because it can be used to determine the geometry and the shape of the molecules by just understanding the number of electrons in the valence shell. The advancement of this theory was the valence bond theory wherein the concept of hybridization is introduced to explain covalent bonds. Both BACPR theory and valence bond theory complement each other and they help us in determining the geometry of the molecule. So if you know the hybridization, you can predict the geometry or the shape of the molecule. And if you know the geometry, you can also predict the hybrid, hybridization of the molecule. So let's see uh, some of the basics of this BACPR theory. So from the name itself we know it is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and uh, this theory is uh, you know is uh, basically based on the concept of the repulsion between bond pairs and lone pairs. So whenever we have a molecule uh, let us say for example methane because we know uh, this is the simplest hydrocarbon and carbon is arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement and uh, the bonds between carbon and hydrogen is called as the bond pair. So why is methane having a tetrahedral arrangement? So for this answer comes from the BACPR theory. So the BACPR theory tells that every molecule uh, have uh, when they are involved in covalent bonding the atoms around the central atom arrange in a way wherein there is minimum repulsion so there there is no repulsion or rather minimum repulsion between the two bond pairs okay like in other examples like say for example ammonia NH3 you are familiar with the ammonia molecule again in NH3 there is a lone pair of electrons so if you are wondering how did this pair of electron come uh, it would be advisable for you to see the Lewis electron dot formula on nitrogen and find out as to why there is two lone pairs on nitrogen atom here. Here I am more specifically worried about the geometry of the molecule or finding the geometry of the molecule. Again in this VSEPR theory we are talking about repulsion. We all know uh, a bond is formed by sharing of covalent bond is formed by sharing of two electrons. But here what we are talking about is repulsive forces existing between the bond pair and the lone pair or a bond pair and a bond pair. So in this particular example of ammonia we see this nitrogen hydrogen is a bond pair. There are three nitrogen hydrogen bond pairs and one lone pair of electron on nitrogen atom. So these electrons which are involved in bonding and which are not involved in bonding contribute to the repulsion. So this repulsive force is maximum when you have two lone pairs. So the VSEPR theory principle is actually based on this simple concept wherein lone pair lone pair repulsion is the greatest in the sense uh, like say for example in case of water molecule H2O. So in case of H2O we know pretty well oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons. Okay, So these two lone pairs are next to next and two bond pairs are next to next. So what the theory predicts is the repulsion between the two lone pairs on the oxygen atom will be more when compared to the repulsion between a lone pair and a bond pair. So that is 
the repulsion between these two will be maximum when compared to the repulsion between this lone pair and the bond pair which is even lesser when compared to a bond pair and a bond pair so this repulsive force between the two bonded hydrogen will be least when compared with the repulsive force between the two lone pairs and it is understandable because the two pairs of electrons are free without being involved in any covalent bond sharing they are uh, uh, more they have more possibility of repulsive uh, repulsive forces than electrons which are involved in bonding so this is the basic simple theory that we must remember for vscpr and apply it to our molecules okay so uh, when we talk about molecules covalent molecules especially we know uh, we can, we uh, we can say we are talking about geometry so we cannot talk about geometry on a diatomic molecule like hcl because it is only two atom two elements that are there so we cannot tell what geometry it is but so the geometry can be predicted only for uh, molecules with more than two elements so uh, we will consider the different categories so the category could be a geometry where there are three elements in the sense whenever we talk about a geometry like i have put up the examples here carbon is put to the center nitrogen is put to the center oxygen is put in the center and hydrogens are written on the sides okay so this way of representing is nothing but the condition that carbon is <coughs> more uh, you know electro uh, positive than the hydrogen atoms and that is the reason why um, it is written at the center in the sense when you represent a molecule the molecule can be represented with a which means the central atom okay and the surrounding atoms and this a the central atom should be more electro positive than uh, x the surrounding atoms or in other words you should say this surrounding atom should be more electro negative okay so more, the what are the possibilities we can have we can have one atom around uh, attached to two groups so when i say one atom attached to two groups how will the groups be arranged around that particular central atom so here in this case this is the maximum distance the two atoms that is the x can exist around a and that is the reason why this geometry is called as a linear geometry in other words the bond angle is 180 degree okay now let us say if there are three at elements around the central atom so if there are three elements around the central atom how will the geometry look so it will be arranged in a trigonal planar way this is the best possible way the atoms could arrange themselves and the bond angle is 120 degree similarly when i am having four atoms that is what is our methane there are four atoms or elements around the central atom and so the bond angle is 109 degree which is tetrahedral okay now if there are five atoms so a x 5 so how will they arrange around the central atom so it is said the three of them will be on the plane Uh, like a triangular planar structure of ax3 and two will project above and below the plane and so this is how the elements will arrange themselves if there are five surrounding elements around the central atom and this is called as trigonal bipyramidal suppose if you are having an ax6 that is six atoms arranged then it will arrange in an octahedral geometry the corners of an ox octahedron suppose we have seven so in case of seven what can happen uh, let me rub out a few of this so that it will be easy for us to represent seven <laughs> so if it is ax7 
so you have the central atom and there are seven atom elements around it so these seven elements will arrange as a pentagon okay so it will this is trigonal bipyramidal this will be pentagonal bipyramidal in the sense the elements will arrange like a pentagon five membered plane okay x x x x and x and two of them will be projecting above and below the plane so this is called as pentagonal bipyramidal so all of these we can see are the fundamental geometries in which the elements will arrange themselves okay so just to recap what i have shown so if there is a molecule wherein the central atom is surrounded by two groups then as i have told you beryllium difluoride is an example so the molecule occupies a linear geometry like this because this is the maximum distance they would want to be because of the repulsion between them similarly in case of ax3 the uh, the structure is triangular planar ax4 is tetrahedral ax5 is trigonal bipyramidal ax6 is octahedral ax7 is pentagonal bipyramidal all of you must remember to uh, uh, keep these geometries in mind so that when you are given problems you will be able to solve them in the right way and also the bond angles associated with these geometries so now the case that we saw recently was just a, a molecule without any lone pair of electrons but in the initial uh, stage itself uh, i showed you two molecules one ammonia and the other one as a uh, water molecule and i drew the structure of ammonia uh, with one lone pair of electron similarly i drew the structure of water with two lone pairs of electrons okay so ammonia and water are examples of a type wherein ax is an ax4 type wherein three of them are elements whereas the fourth position is a pair of electrons so in case of water two elements and two electrons that is why it is given as ax2 e2 and these are actually supposed to have a tetrahedral geometry so what you must remember in these geometries is uh, you know some some shortcut way or uh, the simple way to remember the geometry is uh, if uh, it is four bond it is a tetrahedral if it is a three bond okay ax3 then it is triangular planar if it is five ax5 so accordingly you can tell the geometry so if you uh, see this ammonia molecule it is having three bonds and a lone pair and a lone pair is also considered as a bond so this is the ax4 type but it is uh, one of the position that is tetrahedral position is occupied by a pair of electrons so that is why the geometry is called as pyramidal similarly in case of water the two lone pairs of electrons is assumed to be two bonds and two bond pairs will add up to four bonds so this four bonds are accountable to the tetrahedral geometry so in case of water the tetrahedral geometry is actually distorted to a bent kind of a structure because of the presence of the two lone pairs of electrons which have a repulsive force between them so what happens to the bond angle the bond angle in tet tetrahedral carbon is 109 degree but it gets distorted to 107 degree and 104 degree so you see here very clearly how the bond angle is shifted because of the presence of one pair of electron at this position so the bonds are moved down moved down in case of ammonia and so you get a lesser bond angle than what was ex expected for a tetrahedral geometry similarly we can see for the trigonal 
bipyramidal shape in case of trigonal bipyramidal shape again as i told you here uh, let me draw the trigonal bipyramidal shape so we have three bonds on the plane and two one above and one below the plane so all of these cases so four bonds plus one electron this is three bonds plus two electron pair this is two bonds plus three electron pair so all of them add up to five so that is why they come under the classification ax5 type or trigonal bipyramidal type of molecules that is their basic geometry but we know pretty well according to our vscpr theory presence of load pair of electron will have a uh, difference in geometry so in this particular case we see the geometry is like a seesaw geometry so in the ax5 okay this is ax4 so one of the height, uh, x okay one of the x in the axial positions uh, is actually shifted and as uh, one of the one of the x is shifted sorry one of the x in the equatorial position is shifted and as a result you have the bond wherein uh, this load pair which is on the equatorial bond is uh, giving a structure like a seesaw you know seesaw will be like this and then uh, you have a stand at the bottom so similarly like the seesaw this molecule has two x and another x like this and a load pair here so because it is looking like a seesaw okay this is called, given the geometry name seesaw similarly you see this particular molecule so again i have a and in this case again the lone pairs are actually occupying the equatorial positions this is something you must remember so there are two lone pair of electron two of them are occupying the equatorial position one x alone is there in the equatorial position and the two axial positions that is position above and below the plane are occupied by the element so this geometry looks like a t and that is why this geometry is called as a t shape and now coming to the last case so in the last case you see a is written and again there are three electron pairs so all the three electron pairs are in the equatorial position and the two bonds above and below the plane has the elements so now when you see this particular molecule this is having a linear geometry or a bond angle of 180 degree so you twist it and see like this this is like this ax which is a linear geometry okay so because it is a linear geometry uh, we get to know it though this hybridization i have not talked about hybridization we should know what is the hybridization of a trigonal bipyramidal in all these molecules their hybridization will be same but their shape or geometry is different because of vscpr theory similar kind of distortion is also seen in the ax6 type so again ax6 is an octahedral all about angles are 90 degrees to one another so this is what it is so now in this what would happen one of the position is replaced by a pair of electrons all other positions we have the uh, surrounding groups so this is actually having a geometry kind of a square a square and a pyramidal kind of a structure so that is why this is called as a square pyramidal this is called as a square pyramidal structure similarly for the ax4 type what would happen is sorry so 
So AX4 type, all the four bonds are on the sides and the two load pairs occupy the top and bottom positions. So they are on the square and that is why this is called as a square planar. Okay, so these are the two geometries. Okay.